Did you want to be an astronaut? I actually did, but I was nearsighted, and so I couldn't be an astronaut. That was Google's Rebecca Moore, the one who wanted to be an astronaut. Instead, she's now managing a partnership between Google Earth and nonprofit organizations called Google Earth Outreach. It helps nonprofits by teaching them how to annotate Google Earth with layers of information, like text, video, photos, or maps. Many of them believe telling their story in Google Earth will help them you know, raise awareness, get donations, motivate people to sign petitions, to lobby their congressional representative, um, and make a real impact by telling their story in the vivid context of Google Earth. This is Chief Almir, a leader of the Sarui tribe in Brazil's Amazon basin. And this is some of his people's 600,000 acres of rainforest land. The Sarui's land and culture are under tremendous pressure from miners and loggers making illegal incursions into their territory. Almir came to Google to ask for better satellite imagery to show where this was happening. When Chief Almir came to us, and told us his story, we were very moved. We were moved by his personal courage in trying to help his people. We understood that they had a very serious problem, and we were convinced that Google Earth could, in fact, be a tool to help them get the word out to our more than 250 million users around the world about the situation. And the, the last part is that uh, this could potentially be a model for other uh, indigenous people around the world. If you look at their land, actually, in Google Earth, they have 600,000 acres of tropical rainforest that is healthy and green and vibrant. But at the border of their land, surrounding it, is completely clear-cut land. Because they have gold on their land, miners and loggers are illegally entering their land now and extracting timber and gold. This is where mapping enters in. Certain people are saying, well, they don't need 600,000 acres. They're just 1,200 people. Why do they need all this land? So with the help of the Amazon conservation team, uh, who taught them how to use GPS, the Surui people have gone through the 600,000 acres, and they have mapped where they hunt, where they fish, where they have their ceremony, where they gather medicinal plants. There's a certain type of arrow they make that requires hardwood from three different trees which are in totally different parts of their land. And as they began to map it out, you see, they use this entire 600,000 acres. This is their entire community. We can help portray this information in Google Earth and perhaps it will make a difference. That's world-famous primatologist Jane Goodall. She's been studying chimpanzees in Tanzania since 1960. Her organization, the Jane Goodall Institute, took part in the pilot program with Google Earth Outreach. If you double-click on Jane Goodall Gombe Chimpanzee Blog, it's called, the globe will spin and fly you into Tanzania, right into the Gombe National Park where she started her groundbreaking research in 1960. Um, and you'll see the, these little chimpanzee icons. You click on those and up come biographies of the chimps, the famous chimps that she has written about and that so many people have followed over the years. Um, video, photographs, and so on. Then the blog part of it is extremely innovative. They have a, a young researcher. And so she's out in the field, as Jane Goodall was 40 years ago, following the chimps, taking photographs, making field notes, but instead of it going into some dusty journal, every day it goes online in Google Earth. She's blogging, it's in the spot where it happened with the photograph she took that day, and uh, people are calling it uh, a chimpanzee soap opera. <laughs> the next stop on our tour is the Global Heritage Fund layer. It shows endangered cultural heritage sites around the world, like ancient Mayan temples, a uh, church, I believe, in Turkey. By looking at their layer, users can virtually go see these sites, and in fact, 
there are even three-dimensional models of some of these really beautiful ancient structures. The idea is to raise awareness around the world about these sites and within time they're going to be opened for a kind of cultural ecotourism. So then people will be able to go there for real. Wow, that's pretty powerful. Yeah. But probably not as powerful as the final stop on our tour, the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum's lair, Crisis in Darfur. Now in Google Earth, this layer is on by default. If you fly over Africa, you'll see a series of flames and other icons. As you zoom in, if you click on one of those flames, it will take you to detailed imagery of a destroyed village. There are more than 1,600 destroyed villages. You'll also see photographs of people who have been impacted by this. And from each one of these balloons that pops up, there's a link that says, how can I help? which will take you to the museum's website and you'll get more information about what you as an individual can do to lobby your congressperson and so on to try to make a difference in this situation. For podtech.net, I'm Catherine Girardeau. How can people find Google Earth Outreach? Google Earth Outreach. Google Earth Outreach. People people get get terrain. Lost. Do you ever get lost? People get lost. 3D terrain. People get lost. Do you ever get lost? Google.com. Do you ever get lost, lost. Do you ever get lost in your life? No. Do you ever get lost? No, sorry. Earth.google.com slash outreach. <laughs>